Hi, this is Max with EDMBoston.com, and we have a special guest today here, Norman DeRay. Hi, Norman. How's the trip in from uh, Las Vegas? What's well, good? I mean, I was uh, traveling like six hours flight, but it's always a pleasure to be East Coast, West Coast, West Coast, East Coast. It's good. Oh, it's definitely great to have you in Boston. We definitely notice uh, yeah, your voice is a little tired there from <laughs> Las Vegas. Yeah, I mean, it's mainly part of the aircon, you know. I'm not partying that much. <laughs> Uh, we heard uh, Tommy Trash is out there with you. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that and what that was like? I mean, it's crazy. I never met uh, I never met um, Tommy before, uh, but that this last weekend I was playing in Pasha, New York, and he came into the booth, and you know it was good to see him, like to meet him like this. And yesterday I was in Vegas. He was playing at Lavo in Las Vegas, so I came to, to you know say hi to him in the club and everything. It was a good. It was a good show. Excellent. Now, you've produced three new tracks. Um, can you talk a little bit about those? Maybe did you share them with Tommy? Um, one of them uh, is, is titled Music, and you worked with uh, Takoto on that? Yeah, you could. You could. <laughs> um, Takoto is a Japanese artist I met like three, four years ago, and we became really close friends. He's an amazing artist, really, you know, different vibe. He's still into the more defective sound, uh, vocal tracks. And I used to play and I used to love and I still love a lot of their tracks, you know, this kind of uh, vocal music and everything. So he told me that he has a track um, called Music, he wanted to do something with me. And I said, why not? So um, I took his track and I decided to bring it more into my sound. So it came with this like uh, version called Mita uh, Mitokoto versus um, Shurakano, which is uh, who is a singer. And I did an edit of uh, this version, and yeah, it's gonna be released like I think in three or four days on Azuli, which is a brand, is a part of um, Defected Records. Okay. When you approached the uh, remix, did you kind of say like, when you heard the original track, you know, wow, this I think if I did this, this would be a great opening track on my set, or did you have a purpose for it in mind? Not really. I mean, I'm always trying to uh, to listen to it perfectly, like a few times and to see if I can bring something to it. I mean, if the track is already good, I, there's no point for me to try to do something, you know? I mean, a big track is a big track. So. But when, you know, there's a good vocal or a good piano or violins, whatever, um, and I feel it, yeah, I'm going for it. Okay. And I don't care about if it's opening track, closing track, I just, because I'm never like thinking like this. I always play tracks different places in my set, whatever, depending on the crowd. Okay. Now, can we talk about your other new song, Celsius, with Eddie Tonic? Uh, you know, how did you feel that track came out? Because I know it's definitely uh, one of my favorites. It sounds, you know, really epic. I mean, we wanted to do um, a collaboration with Eddie since years, but it was so hard to catch up each other, you know. So, and it was November, I think, this year. We decided to be together for two days, and we wanted to mix perfectly our sound, you know, more big room progressive sound but still groovy so we decided to do this this track it came it came after two days it came like this you know and we were like wow it sounds epic so let's try and let's try it on the crowd and in the clubs and it came you know it did really good so we sent it to Steve Steve Angelo and yeah decided to sign it straight on size mirrors. Awesome congrats on that. Uh, you know given dance music and what it's going through right now uh, what do you think uh, the biggest surprise is going to be in the next six months? You mean for about artists or music or...? You know, as far as, you know, the overall direction of EDM and do you think, uh, you know, something uh, special is going to happen over the six months that maybe you know is going on behind the scenes or can you speak to that? To be honest, you never know. I mean, I, I know, for, for example, I know Team Avicii since two years now, well, two years and a half. And uh, uh, he's a really talented guy, and you know, nice guy, we're really good friends. But I didn't expect that. I didn't expect it was so big so fast, you know. Uh, even with your close friends, you, didn't, you don't expect that. So things are moving so fast right now, especially in the US. You know, there's so many people listening to dance music right now. So our little things can, you know, mm. become really big in two months. Uh, since you brought up Avicii, you know, Tim's definitely a really nice guy and, you know, he definitely has something really special going on right now. Uh, 
and he has the advantage right now really bringing in the new generation into dance music and we definitely saw that when we he was in town last Friday and he brought the massive face and the visuals are absolutely epic like probably the best visuals I think I've seen personally at a show you know, I've yet to see like Dead Mouse and Infected Mushrooms new setup but they were definitely really good but you know one of the things that kind of was disappointing about his set was he definitely played big room track after big room track more of like a concert style than a than your uh, traditional set, you know, builds and breakdowns and drops. Can you talk about maybe how that might affect the new generation and what you would like to see? I don't know. I mean, you know, every single DJ are playing different music or, I mean, they set up their set uh, differently. But, yeah, I think this is from my point of view, what, I, what I've seen since last year or, yeah, two years. I mean, now it's all about big room music and sometimes, I mean, the new DJ, I'm not talking especially about AVG, but about a lot of DJs, mm -hmm. um, they don't maybe have the experience of, a, like, the DJ experience, really. And sometimes it's, like, all about big room tracks, after big room tracks, after big room tracks. And so it's, it can be boring for the crowd as well when you play for two hours, always the same tracks with the same breaks, the same drop and everything. I think it's a bit different, you know, you need to work the crowd with different tracks sometimes. You need to come with two, three tracks a bit down, you know, and then you, when you go up, it's even better. I've, it's my point of view, it's the, the way I'm working the crowd, but, I mean, everyone is doing different. Yeah, no, it's definitely interesting. It's, as I said, you know, it's definitely something we were more used to than what we saw happen at the concert. Now, can you talk a little bit about, you know, you're on tour now in North America, you know, with new music, and there's a lot of big things going on. Can you talk about, uh, you know, Dead Mouse just came out and he talked, kind of slammed some artists about being press and play DJs. What are you doing in your sets to really make them special, to really give the fans some value for coming out to see you? I mean, I, I, I was, to be, to be honest, I was a DJ before being a producer. So I know that, you know, I'm, He's my, my, my good friend, you know, to be to be a DJ. I mean, I never I never prepare my set, and that's true. I never go in this club saying like I gonna play that that that. Never. I go there like maybe 30 minutes before the show, and I try to to check the crowd to see if the you know we the mood of the of the people to see if they are more into big big room tracks, more into deep, more into vibe, you know, like a melody tracks and everything. So I really try to. Keep the, the, the vibe, um, to feel the vibe like before my set, and then I try to adapt it so I can go on stage and with one track to open to open my set. And for the next six months, I will never do that again. I mean, it's it's always different. Yeah, that's exciting. Uh, what do you think? You know, if you can kind of predict uh, into the future of the summer. What do you think is going to be the track that defines it? Is there anything that's uh, kind of sticking out to you right now? I don't know. I mean, I, I know that in the U.S. a lot of, I mean, the dubstep thing is getting bigger and bigger and people are crazy about that. I can see that as well because, you know, beside of my show, I try to go and to see the other DJ, to see what the people like. And yeah, I can really see that. But I think um, that the melody music will always be there because finally, if you don't have melody in the track, the people get a bit bored, you know, it's all it's not about the always about the rhythm, it's all about the melody for me. And I think that in the next six months, maybe in one year it's gonna be more, you know, I focus on that on that thing. Okay. Uh, one of Armin Van Buren's big things is uh, he says, you know, don't be a prisoner of your own style. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you kinda do to keep things interesting in the studio? You know, you, I, you definitely work with a lot of different artists. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that? I mean, he's right. I think he's right. It's it's good to show the people that you, you have different skills and you always and you also like different styles. I mean, the track we talked before with Takoto on Azuli is completely different from what I'm playing in my set in US, for for instance. You know, in US I'm playing a bit more, you know, big room and harder than in Europe. But my roots are more into this defective sound and everything. So. I always try to show the people that I can do different styles. And for me, it's like a portfolio of what, what I can do, you know. I can play this kind of music sometimes, but I can play big room, I can play harder, like drag I'm doing outside and everything. 
for instance, I was playing in Ormco Beach in Las Vegas like two days ago. Mm -hmm. And I had an early set because I had to leave in LA after that. And you know, it was not completely packed. The people were just hanging out around the pool. It was really hot and everything. And I didn't feel really playing hard, you know, at that time. I was like, no, there's no point playing hard for the people just at the beginning of the day. So what I did, I played take house for two hours. I'm not a take house DJ. I just wanted to have fun and to show the people that I can do it. And even for me, like, it's a challenge. Let's do it. I want, I want to try these tracks. I want to, I want to see what I can do with that as well. Yeah, that's always interesting to be able to watch someone kind of push themselves instead of just fall back on, you know, their uh, steady material that they already have. So, you know, it's great to hear that you know, you're doing that and some other DJs are as well. Uh, one of the fun things, you know, that dropped this week on Facebook, we saw uh, Steve Aoki's rider contract um, come out and it was definitely, for the people at home that don't know what a rider contract is, that's the amenities an artist requests before a show. And uh, some of the interesting things he on, had on it, you know, of course, a standard champagne, uh, but he also had, you know, uh, black V-neck T-shirts, socks, uh, brief underwear for, was one of the uh, unusual ones. And we wanted to know, Norman, do you have uh, anything special that you like to have before a set? I don't think so. I think I'm really like basic DJ. You know, I'm, I don't, I don't need many things to go on my set and to play. But that's funny that you're saying about the V-neck and everything. I think it's really good, you know, like you can change t-shirts and everything. No, but I'm asking like, yeah, for sure, I'm asking some drinks sometimes. And usually when you are seeing some drinks, it's not for you, it's just for your guests. You know, when you come into the club with your friends, you just want you want them to be nice. And so you love a bottle of champagne for, for them and everything. What I'm asking for me is just like towers sometimes because it's really hot into the club. So I just want to have a towel with me. Um, I'm just asking that the sound is perfect as well because that's a really important part for me. And apart that, nothing, nothing really like special. I'm, I'm really basic. I'm a bit boring. <laughs> hey, you know what? At the end of the day, it's uh, what you do out on the dance floor that really matters, and I think uh, people definitely appreciate that. Uh, we just wanted to say thank you very much for stopping by with EDM Boston. We appreciate it, and uh, good luck with the rest of your tour. Thanks. Thanks very much. Thanks for having me. Uh, until next time, guys. We'll see you later.